It's just about 15 minutes after 6 as we begin the newsmaking here on the Morning Brew on this Friday, the 23rd of April, 2021. Uh, we're putting the spotlight on the newly instituted COVID-19 regulations announced earlier this week by the Health Minister and to help us um, wade through what that could mean for all of us, especially as uh, the police service is going to be cracking down on citizens not observing the regulations. We've got a uh, uh, legal mind, Martin George. George, attorney at law, chatting with us this morning. Good morning to you, Martin George. Thanks for joining us. Hi, good morning to you, Jesse May, and good morning, Trinidad and Tobago. Martin George, uh, there was a press conference yesterday held by the police commissioner and other senior officials in the police service. The police commissioner adamant that the police will be clamping down on those people who do not adhere to the COVID-19 regulations. He says even if a police officer himself is breaking the regulations, they're going to get a ticket. This is a very strong message being sent, but just how effective can the enforcement be? Well, Jesse, May, the fact of the matter is that, okay, let's look, for instance, at what happened with the Alicia's guest house raid, where persons were arrested and they were charged. Now, quite a few of those persons were subsequently um, discharged by the magistrate's court um, in relation to the section under which they were actually charged. However, if you recall, a few of them actually challenged the constitutionality of the public health regulation, and that matter failed in the High Court. And in fact, it went to the Court of Appeal, and last week, the Court of Appeal upheld the um, judge's ruling, and that also um, you know, was determined that look, those public health regulations were actually valid. So, we have to look at two things. Number one is the constitutionality of the public health regulation, because lots of persons have complained about them, and you know they said, well, look, you have brought this by regulation rather than going through the full parliamentary process, if, if you understand me. So some people have said, well, look, it ought to have been by full debated legislation in the parliament. However, the courts have consistently ruled in favor of supporting those public health regulations as to their constitutionality. So I just wanted to get that point out there because I know lots of persons are still in doubt as to whether these regulations are valid or whether by doing it under the public health ordinance, which is an old ordinance from 1940, whether those um, you know, provisions could be valid. In fact, um, last week, um, last month, sorry, you had a ruling by Justice Don Donald Honeywell, where she upheld the public health regulations dealing with the border closure. And she ruled that, look, in those circumstances, the regulations were valid and they were constitutional. If you recall, that was a matter which was brought by a citizen who had been stranded. She had gone up to the U.S. Virgin Islands and she was supposed to return. But the thing is, it's not until I think September she was eventually able to return. When she got back, she filed this action challenging the constitutionality of the law, which basically kept her out. And this speaks also to all the citizens who are stranded, who are, you know, complaining, you know, about the regulations in terms of the border closure. So we just want to establish the ground rule to, to make it clear that, look, the law has been upheld repeatedly as being constitutional, even where you had a situation where I think um, one of the um, pundits had to challenge the regulations as, as it related to churches and you know um, the restrictions that were imposed. The Court of Appeal, I think last week, made a ruling where they actually reversed the judgment of Justice Ronnie Budu Singh, as he then was. He's now in the Court of Appeal. But the point is, while he was still a puny judge, they, he made a ruling where he um, ruled in favor of the, um, the pundit who had brought that action. However, the Court of Appeal has reversed that ruling, and they said, look, even in relation to the churches, the court 
um, the, the state has that right based upon the circumstances of the pandemic that we're facing. So that's just to lay the groundwork so that persons understand that, look, while the laws may seem a bit onerous, while it may seem that it's restricting our rights, our freedoms, our, you know, we have to understand that, look, that's part of your social contract. That's part of what living in a society, in a group of persons, and, you know, consenting to be regulated by laws and by order and by the rule of law. That's part of what we've all signed on for as being part of society. I know the sociologists will be able to explain this in even greater detail as part of our duty and our, you know, our, our social contract with each other. So, mm. Martin George, I, I want to I want to zoom in to something that the commissioner would have said yesterday with regard yeah. to police enforcement of the regulations. Uh, he indicated the ERPs would be the ones who would be primarily responsible for this. And there was a scenario put with regard to um, uh, bars and uh, other business places like that. And there was some concern in terms of exactly um, how wide you know, is the premises of these business places. There also the issue of your private residence uh, came up again um, in mm -hmm. terms of, you know, gatherings of people and, and that kind of thing. Can we wade through that for a minute? Because I know that uh, many people are concerned about some of that that they would have heard yesterday. Okay, all right. So if you recall, Jessamy, we had instances in the past where there was that debate in terms of public versus private. I mean, we had the infamous viral video of the private beach and mm -hmm. um, the young lady who um, you know, made her public declarations in that regard. You know, but the, the fact of the matter is that even under the old original public health regulation, there has always been the authority within public health officers to be able to enter even private premises for the purposes of ensuring that your the regulations are complied with it's as simple as yes you may if we just think back to i mean years ago you know growing up as a child you may have seen public health inspectors coming around and they you know they would show you their car they would show you the regulations and they would say listen we need to come in to inspect your premises we check in to see if you have any containers with water that are harboring mosquitoes etc you know so the point is they've always had that power now in the circumstances of these present regulations if it is that a public health officer needs the assistance of the police in, to enter or to enforce these regulations, of course, they are able to do so to enlist that support. Now, we also have specific regulations which have been made under these public health regulations for the coronavirus. Um, so therefore, under those provisions, the police are also empowered to enforce those regulations so say for instance the mask wearing right which and the point is that the, the legislation not just mandates the wearing of the mask but it also explains how the mask is to be worn it's supposed to cover both the mouth and the nose remember it's a mask it's not a muzzle you see lots of people just wearing it on their mouths you know as if it's a, a muzzle that you have on a dog but no it's supposed to cover the nose and the mouth so therefore if it is that you wearing it and not wearing it properly, you can also be ticketed in those circumstances. Now, as to the ambit of premises in terms of what you're speaking about, again, the public health regulations um, speak to that. And then you also have, for instance, the magistrate's licensing sessions, which will then define in terms of when they grant you a liquor license or a spirits license, a spirit retailer's license, they will define what comprises your premises. So therefore, if it is that you're talking about persons who are congregating, say, for instance, on the pavement outside a bar in Aria Peter Avenue, mm -hmm. then that is a different circumstance from persons who are within the premises that have been licensed. So that's where you would go to to determine the boundaries of that. Now, persons who are congregating outside can still probably be targeted if they are in breach of the rule of in, in excess of five persons gathered, right? Because remember, we now have that. So in other words, in a public place, so therefore the pavement would be a public place. So if you have more than five persons outside a bar, 
in a public place, they can be targeted for that reason. They may not necessarily be able to be held liable for being on the premises of the bar. But the point is, you have other aspects where you can look at targeting them in terms of being in a public space and more than five persons gather. So there are ways to approach it. Mm. Right. Lastly, go, go ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. You, you're going to make a final point on this issue because many people are concerned about this and they're worried whether even in your private um, premises, right. if, that, if that, you can be. I, yeah. So that, that was uh, that's what I was coming to. The thing about the private residence is that it is always a difficult balancing act for the police because, first of all, if it is that you are at home with your family members or your relatives or even your own personal invited guests, once it's not something that is an event open to the public or a paid event or something that you are charging for, it's difficult for the police to regulate that in your private residence. Now, I want to make the, dif the distinction, Jesse May, between a private function being held at a public place. Okay, All right? You will recall the wedding ceremony that occurred in Chagornas in, in the restaurant upstairs where the police raided it and persons were ticketed and charged and stuff like that. That's a different thing. Even though that was a private wedding function, it was being held in a public space. So therefore, that made it public in that sense. So therefore, of course, yes, the police have clear authority to be able to enter and to be able to um, you know, deal with that type of scenario. But if it is that you are talking about a private um, function you are having in your private residence with your family members, something that you know, um, you're not inviting the public at large, that it's not a paid event, it's not a ticketed event or anything of the sort, then it makes it very difficult for the police to justify entering your premises in those circumstances, right? So Mart Martin, George, we're going to have to leave it there. We have to leave it there for now. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, but I'm so glad okay. that you were able to make those two very critical distinctions for the benefit of our viewers this morning. We're going to be sure. in touch because I'm sure this is this is a dynamic situation. It, 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 yes, it, it, it's, it's, it's a rolling scenario mm -hmm. and it unfolds day by day. So, of course, we'll keep talking about it more, Jessamy. It's a pleasure as always. Thank you and have a great morning. All right, thank you so much, uh, Attorney at Law Martin George, lending us some of his expertise this morning to clarify some of those issues. Uh, we're going to be taking a quick break when we come back. The spotlight will be on you, pensioners. We're going to clarify some issues with you in terms of some new measures that are being put in place to secure your pensions. Stay with us.